I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're taking a look into the captivating world of Jesus Christ, as never before with Jacob R. Klein's groundbreaking book called King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels. This riveting narrative challenges traditional views, uncovering the revolutionary aspects of Jesus' life and teachings. We will explore the Messiah's radical journey and the profound impact on faith and history. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at King Pages Press for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his amazing book. The links are below this interview. Jacob, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Uh, great to be here and great to do this interview with you, Logan. Uh, see that you've got quite a following there. Well, I appreciate that. I'm glad to have you on the show. And I think our viewers are going to be very interested in what you have to say for sure. We hear of Jesus Christ referred to as the King of Kings often. We don't hear the phrase rebel of rebels. So tell us how Jesus was a rebel. Okay, so uh, I'll give it an example of uh, what I mean by rebel rebels. Okay, so basically I'll People today, they say that they are like a servant of the state, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, people uh, hear that saying all the time. Whether they're genuine about it or not, well, that's up for debate. But back in Jesus' day, what you're talking about is a bunch of uh, people. You got the Roman uh, emperor, and uh, then you got the Sanhedrin as well. And they pretty much lorded it over them. They said, uh, this is what you do. You must follow our command and stuff. They didn't even pretend to be a servant of the people. They were just letting people know, we're your ruler. This is how things are going to be. You might as well accept it. Yeah. Uh, Jesus, would he also be considered a rebel because of his actions, like how he went into the temple and tossed over tables um, and uh, called out uh, what he thought was hypocrisy and so forth? Oh, absolutely. Because uh, you mentioned about the temple uh, being overturned. Well. For what I understand is that uh, a lot of times when uh, people went to the marketplace, they uh, sacrificed their sheep or doves or they bought those prices because uh, it was just more feasible and more economically sound. Mm -hmm. But Jesus overturning the temple like that, he was saying, uh, no, this is not acceptable because as it turns out, they were kind of like uh, forging uh all sorts of uh, prices and uh, being dishonest with how they were about the marketplace. Mm, absolutely. So that would definitely be a, that would definitely be a rebellious act. Yes, yes, for sure. Give us an overview of the book, of what it's about. Okay, so uh, we're obviously talking about Jesus being a rebel of rebels, mm -hmm. but it's more like a rebel of rebels in the human sense, and at least uh, the way people uh, do things, as opposed to what God wants him to do because he's going to be a servant to God. He's going to do whatever the father says he is pretty much uh, coming down from heaven uh, in the spirit, going down to earth and saying, okay, uh, I'm going to strip myself of, uh, you know, my Lordship and I'm going to be a servant here on earth. Mm -hmm. uh, and no matter what God says, I'm just going to obey it through and through. But sometimes that obedience goes against what human tradition says. And it goes against what uh, human tradition uh, tells you to do. Absolutely, absolutely. What was it like for you writing this book? Tell us the kind of research you did and uh, what the writing process was like. Okay, so uh, in terms of research, uh, I pretty much went uh, back to the scriptures, read the gospels, and all that, because uh, that's how I actually started writing books. Was because I would write down the gospels, I would write down a journal, and see. Hmm. Boy, writing all this stuff down, I'm pretty good at what I'm doing. So I actually, I, as a result, managed to uh, write down two other books, uh, Stories of the Old Testament and Stories of the Old Testament Savior Needed beforehand. So I went back to the scriptures, though, because, you know, uh, part of a Christian author is that guilty pleasure of writing by Jesus. And I couldn't, couldn't resist that. I had to do it at some point. <laughs> so... So I went to, through the scriptures, and uh, it was pretty much a uh, strip bare. I couldn't do it like the first two books where I just plucked 10 stories out of the Old Testament and then put them in a book mm -hmm. and uh, do it in a way that I could narrate. 
No, I just decided to strip it bare, going from uh, Matthew 1 to the final chapter of John. And uh, obviously, I'm going to use my uh, own uh, little uh, wit of creative license. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that's what I did. was just put in a strip bare, try to cover as much material as I could in a condensed book. <laughs> yeah, well, you did. You did a great job. You covered a lot of ground, a lot of ground that I think a lot of authors have either not talked about or not talked about in the same light, for sure. Which teachings of Jesus or miracles performed by him do you think illustrate best his revolutionary nature? Okay, so uh, uh, there is this uh, one about uh, uh, if you, your enemy hits you at the right cheek, give him the left also. Yeah. Okay, everyone's thinking, okay, just let him do whatever you want to you. That might be true up to a point, but by the same token, what Jesus was really saying is, in order to gain your honor, what happened was they would do a backhand like this mm -hmm. on your right cheek there. Okay, so you give them your left. They had to use the same hand, the strong hand, in order to uh, slap you, and they can't do a backhand. They have to do it with the palm, so if they do it like this, that means uh, your honor is restored. So that's one aspect. Mm -hmm. Uh Another, uh, hmm, I would say more like uh, uh, Paralyzed Man there. That's another example. Mm -hmm. Paralyzed Man, uh, some of his friends open uh, the roof of the house there. They lower him down. And then as soon as they lower him down, they put him at Jesus' feet. And uh, what Jesus says is, uh, uh, man, your sins are forgiven. And at that point in time, what Judaism taught was only God could forgive sins. No mm. man could do it. So in that aspect, it was a revolutionary uh, idea and concept. And because Jesus was willing to forgive him of his sins, okay, now it's okay for people to forgive each other and uh, be forgiven before God. And it completely changed the way uh, we look at things in terms of, of forgiveness. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me a little bit about your writing career. Okay, so I guess I, I I usually would say it goes back to 2012. It might actually be a little bit further than that because uh, I was a senior in high school, and uh, what we would do as one of our assignments was uh, write down uh, various obituaries or uh, various ways a person or a thing got killed, mm -hmm. like uh, Carson Daly stuff and uh, SpongeBob SquarePants in a blender. <laughs> okay, so uh, along those lines there, I have realized uh, that I was pretty good at it, but you know, I had other interests. I wanted to, like, be a pro wrestler, or uh, I was trying out for the basketball team at the time. Obviously, I got cut. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be chasing LeBron's record. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so uh, that held back for a couple of years. So then uh, this uh, re distant relative of ours, uh, Brad Lockwood, he would uh, write down the history of the cases, and I thought, okay, this might be feasible again. Tried out one uh, book, but unfortunately didn't get published. And it pretty much was held on hold for a while there until I uh, wrote down the uh, journal of uh, the gospel that I was writing down and then realized I was pretty good at what I was doing there. Mm -hmm. And uh, transitioned, transitioned over uh, to uh, my first book, uh, Stories of the Old Testament. Originally, I was going to publish it with uh, Charisma House, but they've were a little too expensive for me, so I went with Outskirts, and it's led to uh, uh, my other two books, uh, Stories of the Old Testament, Savior Needed, and King of Kings, Rub of Rebels. Wonderful, wonderful. You seem to have a interest, obviously, in religion. What pointed you in that direction? Uh, pretty much was a uh, race, uh, you could say. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in a Methodist home there with my uh, parents there, taking me to church every Sunday. Gotcha. And, uh, it was pretty much instilled in me, uh, all the teachings of Jesus, and uh, also uh, teachings uh, like uh, what my mama did. Uh, God bless her. I miss her because she recently passed. I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, thank you. But uh, when uh, she was alive, she uh, used to teach me and a couple of other kids about uh, the book of Revelation. There was a very cool aspect there. And yeah. obviously, uh, didn't always like follow along. I didn't right, always, uh, right. Obviously, nobody's perfect, and we all sin, fall short of the glory of God. But 
eventually I did find my way back uh, more than I was at one point then. Right. Yeah. Uh, I've been pretty much a steady, consistent sense, I would say. Okay. What do you hope readers take away from your book? What I'm hoping readers take away from my book is pretty much uh, that Jesus is not only a rebel, but he's also very much human in terms of his emotions, in terms, obviously, he's very controlled no matter what. He's got a mission he's going to follow through. But in terms of uh, his humanity as well as his divinity, it's uh, very, something that everybody can uh, relate to on a daily basis. And uh, I hope that uh, that part of humanity reaches them, not just in terms of uh, just reading a book, putting it in the mind and head knowledge, also that touches their hearts very deeply and spiritually. Absolutely. I think this book will do that. It will certainly reinforce the humanity of Jesus and help them on their spiritual journeys and reaffirm their faith. The name of the book written by Jacob Klein is called King of Kings, Rebel of Rebels. It is a riveting book that challenges traditional views, uncovering revolutionary aspects of the life of Jesus, as well as his teachings. It's an amazing book. It's well-researched. It is well worth your time. The links are below this interview. Jacob, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Yep, thanks for having me, Logan, and God bless. God bless, I appreciate your time, sir. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.